Thank you for that introduction, Lynn, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's my second time at uh, Fonam, and uh, second time I get to follow the Premier, so it gets starting to be a thing. So I want to say good afternoon and thank you for this invitation. I hope you're all having a uh, fantastic conference, or I could say phenomenal conference if I wanted to be a pun. Um, so as I said, this is my second time at Fonam, second year in a row. And in fact, last year, uh, just one month after being sworn in as uh, Ontario's Ombudsman, I attended Phonam in Timmins as one of my very first events. Donc, euh, bon après-midi à toutes et à tous. J'espère que vous trouverez la conférence fantastique euh, jusqu'à présent. Et comme je l'ai dit, euh, je suis très heureux d'être ici aujourd'hui pour la deuxième année consécutive. L'an dernier, tout, euh, tout juste après que je devienne Ombudsman, j'ai assisté à Phonam à Timmins et c'était l'un des premiers événements auxquels je participais. And I have to say that attending Phonam last year was an eye-opener for me. Uh, one month into the job, I had come from the uh, federal government, as Lynn alluded to. I had come from being the taxpayer's ombudsman in Ottawa, receiving complaints about the um, Canada Revenue Agency. And despite coming from a small town in northern New Brunswick, where my mother was a uh, town councillor and my father was the city solicitor, not at the same time, uh, I still knew that I had a lot to learn about uh, municipalities in Ontario. So it was a great two-way learning experience. And in addition to my presentation in Timmins and the questions and answers that I received afterwards, I was actually able to spend some time and talk with many of you uh, over coffee at the Convention Centre. So I appreciated that. And again, uh, today I've had the chance to have some uh, great conversations and uh, make some connections. And so I appreciate that. But I have to say, that was one of the first times that I was really able to hear about municipal issues firsthand and to speak with folks on the ground and about your thoughts and your concerns. Well, I want to tell you that since then, I've made it a priority to seek out and meet with municipal officers, council members, and staff across the province. For example, I attended AMO last August, where again, I had many great conversations, and I'll be doing the same thing again this year. You need to know that my team and I regularly meet with individual municipalities, as well as groups like the Municipal Integrity Commissioners of Ontario, or the various boards for municipal associations. We see and we hear the same issues that you see and hear every day, and every day we are learning something new. Nous voyons et nous entendons les mêmes problèmes que vous, et chaque jour nous apprenons quelque chose de nouveau. So last year when I was on the phone arm stage, I told you about my office and our new oversight of municipalities, including how we work and what my approach to the role was. Well, that oversight is not so new anymore. It's been in place for a year and a half. And now, there are other new changes on the horizon, including changes to how, municipal how municipalities operate through Bill 68, legislation that will modernize the Municipal Act. And we've been getting quite a lot of questions about that, and I'll touch on that in a minute. So what's been going on in my office in the past year? Well, since I was here last May, my office has released reports on four systemic investigations. We've made over 100 recommendations, all of which have been accepted by the government and are being implemented. And only one of those was about a municipality. And I might add, that one was done at the request of the municipality in question. So since I became Ombudsman last year, we have made recommendations to improve police training, to transform the system for adults with developmental disabilities in crisis, to strengthen the tracking system for segregated inmates in Ontario jails, and in the municipal sector, to bolster the procurement process in the city of Brampton. But during this time, as I mentioned, I have made it a priority to build productive, appropriate relationships with municipalities, and to share my office's best practices and other observations that we've gained while we've been dealing with municipal issues. And I have to say I am encouraged by the experience that we've had so far. I don't have to tell you that many of the municipal issues that we deal with are thorny and complex. But the communication and the feedback that we've had from municipalities has been overwhelmingly positive. And it's encouraging to see that we're all on the same page with the same end goal, which is to improve governance for citizens. C'est encourageant de voir que nous sommes tous sur la même longueur d'onde et que nous partageons le même but ultime. 
qui est l'amélioration de la gouvernance pour les citoyens. So I want to thank you for inviting me here today and for welcoming members of my team as well who have been at the trade show. I understand you've been keeping them quite busy. So there's another reason why we make it a priority to attend trade shows and conferences like this, because communication is a two-way street. And I want to tell you that we're here to listen and learn as much as we are to educate and inform. And I want you to know that my office isn't just about receiving complaints. It's about working with stakeholders to get problems solved and to improve governance. So I hope you will consider us a collaborative resource if you have questions or concerns. And as we do in any area of our jurisdiction, we strive to work proactively and collaboratively to resolve issues and hopefully avoid the need for a formal investigation as much as possible. Now I know the theme of this year's conference is forward thinking for a great north, a greater north. Well, a big part of planning is having processes and procedures in place now to deal with issues that might arise in the future, issues like public complaints. In this day and age, citizens have come to expect that their local governments will exercise principles of fairness and accountability, and rightly so, and that these same governments will provide ways for them to voice their concerns if and when they have any. So the best way to do this is to create a robust, clear, and straightforward complaints procedure. You know, I'm in the complaints business, and it's not because I like dealing with unhappy people but because resolving complaints is so rewarding, especially when you get to the root cause and can prevent that issue from recurring. What I have learned is that complaints are of great value to any organization. I truly believe that. As Bill Gates has said, your most unhappy, cast, most unhappy customers are your greatest source of feedback and learning. And if I might add, a golden opportunity for improvement. So this is why progressive and forward-looking organizations actually embrace complaints and not see them, or rather, and see them as opportunities to engage with stakeholders and get buy-in to help advance their agendas. This approach is based on an awareness of human nature. If people feel that an organization is not fair or won't listen to them, they are less likely to engage with that organization and accept its decisions and its actions they may actually be inclined to challenge that organization, to protest, to litigate, and not comply with its rules. Now that forces the organization to spend valuable resources dealing with a lack of compliance, litigation, protests, and bad press. That can actually be detrimental to the bottom line. But the opposite is also true. If people see an organization as putting a priority on service and fairness, they are much more likely to support and accept what that organization is doing. Removing the irritants that I'd mentioned above can actually be good for the bottom line and allow that organization to, to devote precious resources to realizing its vision rather than defending itself. Now at my office, we deal with more than 20,000 complaints every year and about one fifth of those are related to municipalities. And we deal with these complaints impartially. You have to know that we do not advocate for the complainants and we know that not all complaints have merit. As my grandmother used to say, it doesn't matter how thin you make the pancakes, there's always two sides, and we know that. So we use each of these complaints to either validate the work being done by the public sector body or provide helpful, constructive feedback on how to solve the problem, improve processes, and prevent the issue from recurring. Now, since we began taking complaints about Ontario's 444 municipalities on January 1, 2016, we've had more than 4,300 complaints come to us about all the issues that your municipalities see every day, from sewage and drains and potholes and snow clearing to bylaws and zoning and to committees and council. Now, when we get a complaint, we look at the administration and the process to determine if the public body followed the correct procedures. We don't get wrapped up in policy decisions. Uh, we don't have oversight over policy. The electors do that for us. So we help resolve issues related to individual complaints and we address systemic issues by proposing corrective action. With all of these complaints, over 4,300 in one year, how many have we closed? Well, about 90%. And how many of those have become full formal investigations? Three, just three. We've had three formal investigations out of more than 4,300 complaints. And again, one of those 
was about procurement issues in Brampton that the city asked us to look into. So what happened with all the other complaints? Well, as we resolved each issue, or helped the, the uh, municipality make its processes better, we validated the solid processes quite often that the municipality already had in place. And we did it quietly, behind the scenes, without any fanfare. And that is consistent with the work that we do in all areas of our jurisdiction. Now, I know many of you are quite familiar with us because of our role as closed meeting investigator. Our office has been the investigator for approximately half of Ontario's municipalities since 2008. Now, this has given our staff valuable experience with municipalities, and it's helped us understand that you're all different in your own way. And it has allowed us to help citizens with hundreds of complaints, but it's also allowed us to help councils ensure that their meeting practices are open, transparent, and consistent with the law. Unfortunately, I know it also led to a lot of confusion and concern, especially in the early days, because it cast the Ombudsman's office in, in a kind of a law enforcement role. And for many people, this created the mistaken belief that our role was to police local councils, which is not at all what we do. An enforcement role, quite frankly, simply doesn't allow an Ombudsman's office to play to its strengths. What an Ombudsman's office normally does, and what ours excels at, is to resolve most complaints informally. We do a great deal of work behind the scenes to humanize government and remove the irritants confronted by citizens. We look for simple, sensible solutions to problems, and again, usually without having to resort to formal investigations. Le rôle d'un bureau d'ombudsman est généralement de régler la plupart des plaintes de manière informelle. Et c'est un rond dans lequel notre bureau excelle. Nous faisons beaucoup de travail en coulisses afin d'humaniser le gouvernement et d'éliminer les sources de friction pour les citoyens. Nous cherchons des solutions simples et sensées aux problèmes et généralement sans devoir recourir à des enquêtes officielles. And so we've been working on materials for council members to better understand their role with regards to closed meetings, including some closed meeting tip cards, an updated version of our Sunshine Law Handbook, and something I'm very excited about is um, an upcoming web resource. It's going to be a digest of our open meeting cases and decisions that will help you search closed meeting cases online quickly and easily just by keying in municipalities or keywords. This is another way that we look forward. We help improve processes so problems don't recur in the future. But the majority of our work is not only done behind the scenes, it's done proactively. At the provincial level, this means meeting regularly with the leadership of provincial government organizations to alert them to problems that they can fix before they mushroom it to something bigger. I meet with the secretary to cabinet and cabinet ministers and deputy ministers. My executive and managers meet with associate deputy ministers and directors and so on down the line. So we foster these relationships in order to resolve problems as efficiently and as effectively as possible, hopefully through collaboration and without an investigation. And we've done this with municipalities too, explaining how we work, looking at complaint trends, discussing what to expect when we call, and reiterating the value of having someone, us, validate if things are working as they should be. In doing this, we often avert the need for a major investigation simply by making sure that complaints are being addressed by those who are directly responsible. Occasionally, we will come across an issue that can't or won't be resolved and that warrant a formal investigation. And even more rarely, we will tackle broad systemic problems that affect hundreds or even millions of people. What we found is that sometimes the political will does not exist or the resources cannot be secured to address these systemic problems until our investigations shine a light on the problem. And once we compile irrefutable evidence, we conduct a fair and balanced investigation, we tell compelling stories to illustrate the problem, and we present feasible recommendations, the desire and the resources usually materialize. For example, in April, we released a report about the tracking and placement of segregated inmates in provincial jails. It made headlines across the province. We made 32 strong recommendations to improve a very flawed system, all of which were uh, accepted and are going to be implemented by the government. So we saw a serious issue that we reported on year after year, but it hadn't gotten fixed. And so we made some noise about it. 
And the result is the government's pledge to put in place our 32 suggestions to make things better. That's what I call a win-win-win situation. It's a win for us because our recommendations are accepted. It's a win for the complainants or the people that are suffering under a policy that doesn't work. And it's also a win for the public service involved because they get the resources to fix a problem that they're usually aware of and usually want to fix in the first place. Donc, c'est ce que j'appelle une solution gagnant, gagnant, gagnant. Nous y gagnons car nos recommandations sont acceptées. La personne qui porte plainte y gagne. Et les fonctionnaires concernés y gagnent aussi car ils avaient souvent conscience du problème, mais ne disposaient pas de ressources pour y remédier. So on a municipal level, we're constantly working with the municipal staff to help cities and towns improve their processes. The great majority of these cases are referred right back to existing complaint mechanisms, like local ombudsmen and integrity commissioners. In some cases, our staff make informal inquiries with the relevant municipal officials, and most of the time, they are able to resolve problems to everyone's satisfaction. So what are people complaining about? Well, as I mentioned in the winter, it was snow removal. Now it's water and sewage issues or garbage collection. We also hear about Ontario Works, housing programs, and of course, bylaw enforcement accounts for a lot of complaints, as does customer service in general. We've also gotten a few complaints about DSABs, which of course are unique to the North. We have a good many examples of informal resolutions already. I'll give you a couple examples. In one case, a man complained to us that he had received a water bill and a late payment penalty, even though he had a $600 credit with the utility. So our staff contacted the municipality and we discovered that the man's original account had been closed and a new account had been set up without the credit being transferred. So once we got involved, it was a very quick matter to resolve and the municipality transferred the credit, canceled out the money owing and waived the late fee. This was a simple issue for us to resolve and a substantial cost saving to the man who was having trouble navigating a complex system. In another case, a woman's Ontario Works caseworker suspended her benefits, claiming that she had received a settlement that meant she was no longer entitled to benefits. The woman couldn't pay her rent and contacted our office for help. After our staff intervened, Ontario Works discovered that the settlement actually had no effect on her benefits entitlement and that her benefits were being withheld by mistake. Ontario Works provided the woman with her benefit payments, everything was fine, she could pay her rent. However, the number one most common topic of complaints so far has been municipal councils themselves. This category includes complaints about council members and their conduct, policies and decisions of council, which again, we don't get involved in, as well as communications and conflict of interest. As with all other complaints that we receive, the first thing we do when we receive a complaint like this is determine if it can be resolved locally. And this is where you can ask yourselves, what can our municipality do to make sure that we're able to help the people in our community? What steps can we take to look forward and be proactive? Well, do you have a process for handling local complaints? Do you have a code of conduct? Better yet, do you have a local accountability officer like an integrity commissioner or an ombudsman or both? We know of 24 municipalities in Ontario with municipal ombudsmen, a number that has grown dramatically just in the last year. We also know of about 84 integrity commissioners, three auditors general, and more than 90 municipalities with complaint processes. Now these accountability officers and processes will ultimately make your municipality a stronger and better government for the people you serve. So from the start of the expansion of our mandate, our office has made it clear that we encourage municipalities to have their own accountability officers and clear processes for dealing with complaints. What we tell municipalities time and time again is that local problems are best served locally and that's more desirable than having to resort to the ombudsman in Toronto. Dès le début de cette expansion de notre mandat, notre bureau a clairement souligné que nous encourageons les municipalités à avoir leurs propres agents de responsabilisation ainsi que des processus clairs de traitement des plaintes. So we think it's so important to have a code of conduct and complaints process that we've been providing in information and presentations across the province 
on just how to do this. Having an effective, credible public complaints policy helps build confidence in local government. The objective review can help citizens understand and accept why decisions are being made as they are. It's a cornerstone of transparent, accountable government. And it shows you care about the sound administration and the people you serve. A failure to have a fair, understandable complaints process breeds distrust. It not only makes people wary of you as a government, but it can have a ne negative impact in other ways. Lost revenue, wasted time and resources, and overall unhappiness on the part of both citizens and staff. So without going into all of the recommendations for our municipal complaint processes, because there are many, let me provide you with a few tips for setting up a robust and effective process. To start with, every municipality should have a general complaint policy posted publicly and separate from a code of conduct applying to council members. It should be free for anyone to complain. If there's a local ombudsman or integrity commissioner, information on how to contact that person should be easily available to all citizens. There should be a very clear, clear timeline for responding to complaints. And people should understand where their complaint will go once they've filed it. During the complaint review process, the staff designated to review complaints should consider all relevant information and documents. And once a decision has been made, the person who complains should be provided with a written explanation about why certain decisions or actions were taken. And what we're talking about here is basic procedural fairness, you know, the right to be heard and the right to get written reasons for a decision. Your complaint statistics should be collected and reported publicly. And of course, complaints should be, complainants should be advised that they can contact my office if they're not happy with the response to their complaint. These are just a few suggestions, and there are many more on my office's website. Now, we've been emphasizing the importance of complaint processes for years, but there is another factor now in play that makes them especially important. I know a lot of you here have been discussing Bill 68 this week, which is the bill to modernize the Municipal Act. Many of you have even made submissions to the Standing Committee about the bill, as I myself did. Our work with municipalities across Ontario, together with our extensive expertise in the oversight of provincial government bodies, has given my office a unique perspective on how to improve transparency, accessibility, and accountability in the municipal sector. As I told the committee, I see Bill 68 as a positive step forward. I fully support aspects of the bill that would make it mandatory for every municipal every municipality to adopt a code of conduct for council members and appoint integrity commissioners to review complaints under that code. And we've heard this too. Can't our office act as the integrity commissioner? Well, no. The Ontario Ombudsman is an office of last resort. As I said before, um, local problems are best served locally. We do not replace integrity commissioners or duplicate their work. Let me take a moment to explain how or when we might become involved with an integrity commissioner investigation. If someone is unhappy with the result of an integrity commissioner decision, they could, at that point, come to us. But we still would not duplicate the initial integrity commissioner investigation. What we would do is consider if the commissioner did the following. If they acted in accordance with the relevant legislation, the terms of reference set by the municipality, and any applicable policies or procedures if they followed a fair practice, if they obtained and considered relevant information, and if they provided sufficient reasons to support the decision. And then after examining all the facts, we might determine that the integrity commissioner has acted properly and validate that process. Or we might find it necessary to make recommendations to improve the transparency, accountability, or accessibility of the review. Let me give you an example. A citizen member of a committee who was the subject of a complaint contacted us. He was upset because the integrity commissioner's report was discussed during an open meeting instead of during a closed session as he expected. We contacted the municipality to see what happened. As a result, the municipality decided to update its procedures for integrity commissioner investigations to make it very clear to everyone about its processes and about how and when reports should be discussed. In this case, we didn't examine the actual integrity commissioner investigation. 
but we did assist in clarifying the processes for everyone involved. As I said before, codes of conduct and local accountability officers are simply in the best interests of local democracy and the people that we all serve. And putting these mechanisms in place is a proactive and forward-thinking step that will go a long way to enhancing democracy and smoothing the waters. My office's role is ensuring that those mechanisms are functioning as they should and helping whenever possible by recommending solutions and best practices to bolster those efforts. We also use our unique position and powers to monitor and address issues that are beyond the scope of local officials. In one example, we coordinated efforts between a municipality and a provincial body to make a community railway uh, with a safer crossing. After narrowly escaping being hit by an Ontario Northland railway train near her home, a woman requested that an automatic signal be installed to prevent future incidents. The Ontario Northland Transportation Commission agreed to install the signal if the municipality bore the cost, but the municipality rejected this. Our inquiries determined that, in fact, ownership of the railway crossing had been in dispute for 50 years. After the intervention by our office and some coordinated dialogue, the commission and the municipality offered to share the cost of the signal, and it was installed. Again, a small but significant change, and one where our intervention connected the two levels of government to make it happen. So in closing, I want to thank you again for this opportunity to be here today. My team and I look forward to working with you to solve problems that come to our attention, and by working proactively in collaboration to prevent many issues from becoming complaints or becoming problems. I invite you to engage with us and see us as a public service partner rather than an adversary. Pour terminer, je veux tout simplement vous remercier encore une fois de cette occasion d'être ici aujourd'hui. Mon équipe et moi serons ravis de travailler avec vous pour régler les problèmes qui sont portés à notre attention et travailler en collaboration proactive pour éviter que de nombreuses questions ne deviennent des problèmes ou des plaintes. Je vous invite à travailler en contact avec nous et à nous voir comme une partenaire de service public plutôt, plutôt qu'un adversaire. And so even if we do have some thorny issues to resolve, I believe that it can be a positive experience for everyone involved. Either you will have your practices validated by a credible and independent ombudsman, or you'll receive some constructive feedback that will help you be more responsible and responsive to the needs of the people you serve. 